and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to import data into Airtable when a record is updated. So in this easy to follow guide, we'll use Data Fetcher and the exchange rate.host API to import current currency exchange rates into Airtable whenever a change is made to a record in Airtable. So we will also schedule the exchange rates to update on a regular schedule, so we'll always have access to the latest figures. So we're going to import currency data when a record is updated, but you can use the same approach to import stock prices, crypto prices, enriched leads, or any other information. So exchange rate.host is this free foreign exchange crypto rates and EU VAT rates API, which is really easy to use. But today we're going to make it even easier to track all of your data. So when you arrive back onto your Airtable base, we are going to begin by creating a rates table. So up here we have your table one. If you just double click on this, retitle this as rates. Nice. Now in your first column, you're going to retitle this to currency. Nice and simple, double click, type it in, and then you're going to search for single select. Nice and simple. As soon as you've done that, you can select the save button. And now we're going to add the names of any currencies you wish to convert into the currency field. So this does need to be the standard currency abbreviation. So for example, BRL. Nice. Perfect. Now that you have your table set up, we're going to go ahead and add our extension data fetcher. So up to the right hand corner, you will see this extensions button. So if you select this, then you can search add an extension, that big blue button. Once this appears, you can search for data fetcher and this should pop up right away. You can click on the add button and click add extension. Wonderful. So now we'll arrive to the following screen where you're either prompted to create a free data fetcher account or you can simply continue with Google. Fantastic. So we'd like to import our data. Click on the big blue button to create your first request and we're going to title this request fetch currency data like so. Perfect. For the application, we are going to search for exchange rate.host and for the endpoint, we're going to select convert from one currency to another. Great. Now down in the right hand corner, you'll see a save and continue button that will take you through to the following screen. Now you'll see this from currency. Over to the right hand side, you'll see a plus symbol. So if you click on this, the following should appear and it should automatically have your table titled in there as the rates that you've just titled it as. Then for the field, you're going to select currency, nice and simple, and you'll see that that already imports that data through. So now if you select the confirm button, it should look like this. Now for the two currency, select the currency you wish to convert to. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and convert to US dollars. Now we'll go ahead and click save and run in the bottom right hand corner and select continue. This brings us to the response field mapping page. And this is where you have the choice of which fields you'd like to have imported into your Airtable. So as you can see, Every field is currently switched on, so you can turn these off by turning the toggles from green to gray, or you can simply select filter all to switch them all off. And now you can either search for the fields that you'd like to bring through, or you can find them here. I'm gonna go ahead and search for the rate. So once that appears, you can turn that toggle on from gray to green, and make sure that that is mapping down to new field, and down below that, you'll see a button that looks like a little down arrow. Select that and you can choose the option currency here. Now we'll also retitle this to rate so that all of the information is brought through immediately without us having to edit anything in the field afterwards. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on the save and run button down in the bottom right hand corner. Nice. So as you can see, these fields are now being created. Select show output table. And if you close over that tab on the right hand side, you should be able to see more. And now we have the rate and the currency here. Of course, you can delete the columns in the middle if you wish. You can just do this by clicking delete and delete this. 
and now you can see those right up next to each other. So you can see the currency and the rates. But today we're going to take this one step further to run this request and import data when a record is updated. So this happens automatically and the only place you ever have to come check is Airtable to look for any changes. So in order to do this, you do want to open up the extensions option again back in the top right hand corner because we are looking for the data fetcher options that you've already selected. So if you bring this up to full screen by simply clicking on the full screen button, you can then choose to open this request back up by clicking on the fetch currency data, what you already created. Scroll down a little bit until you see this web hook option. So this will give you the ability to update your records automatically without you having to do a thing. So if you don't currently see this option, you may still have to upgrade your data fetcher account to a paid version. As soon as you've done that, when you come back to this step, you should now see the webhook. When you arrive here, you can select add API key and you'll be redirected to your Airtable account overview. If you select this URL, that should open up for you. And now you can scroll down to the generate API key option. Copy that API key over and paste it back into your Airtable API key input box. Select save. And now as you can see, that has turned on the webhook for the request. Fantastic. So now that you see that the webhook for request has been turned on automatically, you'll see this URL appear underneath. If you select the little clipboard image, you will copy that automatically. And now we're going to go ahead and click save just in the bottom right hand corner and close that window over. Now you'll see up at the top this automations button next to the data. Click on the automations button and this is where we create our automation. So we're going to select the trigger when record is updated nice and simple. Then over to the right hand side, you'll see the configuration, which is the table. And we're going to select rates here, nice and simple. And for the view, we're going to select grid view. Wonderful. Under the fields, you can select fields and then we are going to select currency here. So you'll see that turn on. Then we're going to go ahead and add the run actions. So we're going to click on the add action button and select run script. So here we're going to edit the script and remove the code that is in here. Then we're going to take a space. So if you just press enter and you have a new line, you can then paste in the URL that you copied earlier. Great. Now for the first line, we are going to need a line of code, which you can either find in this video's description or on our blog on data fetcher. So we do have a blog here that is exactly titled like this video. And we have all of the information on this blog. So we're going to scroll down to copy over the text for the script. As you can see, here is the text. We're going to copy this over. Great. And paste it back into our field here. Now, as you can see, it does say your webhook URL, and this is where we want to paste that URL. So go ahead and copy that, take it out and paste it over the top of your webhook URL. So you leave the apostrophe and you leave the question mark press enter. So now if you scroll over to the right hand side, you'll see this input.config record underscore ID, and we want to replace this. So to do this, we're going to go back over to the left hand side and you'll see add input variable. And for the name, we're going to input record underscore ID. And for the value, we are going to select Airtable record ID. Nice and simple there. It's the first one. Select that. And now we're going to test this. So if you select the test button in the top right hand corner, select run tests, and you can just choose any one of these, it should then come out with test ran successfully. Amazing. So you can now select finish editing here in the top right hand corner. And here we can turn on the automation. So just switch that toggle from red to green 
to switch this on and then go ahead back to your data page by selecting the data button next to automations. So now you can see that if you add or edit a record in your currency field, it will automatically update to the current exchange rate for the US dollars. But we can go one step further than this. So we can also set the rate field to update on a schedule in order to keep the exchange rates current by using data fetchers scheduling feature. So we can go ahead and open that extensions option in the top right hand corner and this will pop open to your data fetcher options again. Here you can make this full screen and here you have your request fetch currency data. Once you scroll down, you can see the schedule option for this request. So we're going to turn that on and we do want to make sure that the interval for this is days and we want to keep it for once every day. This is really important because exchange rates are updated daily. So if we choose to have this request run once a day, you know that your records will always be kept up to date. Then all you have to do is select save in the bottom right hand corner and go ahead and close that window over. So hopefully today you have learned how to import data into Airtable when a record is updated. But if you do have any questions, you can always check out our full length blog of this exact topic on our website at Data Fetcher, or you can reach out to us for any questions as well. Thank you so much for taking the time. I really hope you have a good one.